Hi there, welcome to Black Gumbo. How about a tour of our garden and a little update today? Got some parsley here and some uh, tomatoes over here. And they're getting pretty good size. It's been a couple, three weeks since we put them in. Uh, peppers are doing well. Some of these prep peppers came from the suppliers pruned already. They seemed like they'd had their, uh, technically someone has corrected me, they, they've been pinched. And so we've already got some branching there and you can see where that one had been pinched while it was a small little plant. And so it's already branching off. I think I'm going to leave that as is. Most of my peppers this year uh, look like they're going to be pretty decent plants. Later in the summer, sometimes you find some swallow-tailed butterfly caterpillars in this. Uh, they love this stuff. These over here have not been topped, so I'll probably top this one. I'll probably take it off uh, right, right about here, right about there. It seems brutal, but uh, I want these things growing a little bushier. This is a bird pepper, or a bird's eye pepper. And though it wasn't topped, it's got three nice growing branches here, so I might just let, let this one alone. But uh, it's got a lot of growth down here as well that'll come out, so hmm. It's got some fruit coming in on it already. It's a little young for fruit. I don't know. What would you do? Would you top this one or let it grow? It's looking pretty bushy. It's looking pretty profuse. I think I'm gonna let that one go. Here's another pepper that has been uh, nice and branchy and someone has uh, topped that one there. And so it's branching out. This one too looks nice. I mean, look at all this bushiness here. You can tell that these have been uh, pinched at the supplier because they're so branchy. So I might not have to do anything with these peppers this year. That's a lot of, that's a lot of growth. Yeah. We got some spots in the leaves. I'm gonna have to figure out what that's about. But uh, generally I don't do much to peppers at all. I just keep them on my regular fertilization schedule. Now my in-ground tomatoes are doing well. They've tripled in size since we put them in three weeks ago. Uh, I did put in some uh, cages. I'm going to try these cages this year because last year and in previous years I've let these tomatoes grow you know, enormously bushy and they just become untidy and unruly. So I'm going to try to keep them well pruned. Here's typically what happens when you uh, let your tomatoes sprawl about this time of year. I let them sprawl and get real dense. Time to get these leaves up off the ground. I'll do that with a cutter. Take this whole thing off right here. There's a little one I can get with my hands. But uh, yeah, hopefully we can keep these in the cage this year. Over here, this fella fell down in the storm we had a couple nights ago, so I've staked him up. He'll, he'll stiffen up and strengthen up. Uh, go ahead and prune off these suckers here. Pinch. I have to retrain myself to say pinch instead of prune when I'm talking about a tomato plant. Although, you know, hey, it all means the same thing. Got fruit coming in, and uh, yeah, these bush types over here doing well, nice and sturdy. Everybody's looking healthy. Here's an interesting thing. Now, when I was doing a video on potting tomatoes, uh, this was one of those little side branches I pinched off, and I mentioned that it's kind of sad to be so barbaric and brutal that if you pinched off something like this, you can sometimes root them. Well, I threw it off to the side. I came back later and I just stuck it into this, this container here and it's taken root. It's looking a little worse for wear because the bugs are getting to it. But uh, yeah, it's taken root and all I did was shove it about an inch and a half down in there. This is otherwise a pretty healthy looking parsley in here. Uh, this is old parsley here. This parsley is, uh, I, I thought it was just a year old parsley. I actually, looking back on my videos, think it's a two year old parsley plant. And I've taken a lot of parsley off of here. Look at that big giant root down there. Yep, this is good stuff. My figs doing well. I've fertilized them all and they're all doing well. Now, one thing I failed to do with these figs, almost every one of these needs to be potted up or have their, pr their roots pruned or they need to, the larger ones ought to be going into the ground. But uh, because I didn't get a good start on this year, these are pretty root bound. So I'm gonna have to feed them and water them and help them along through the summer. Uh, same thing over here. Some of them have been potted up 
Uh, those little guys down there need to be put in a, a larger pot, so I'll take care of that at some point. But uh, yeah, what I'm doing is I'm trying to find the five varieties I like the best, and I'm going to plant them in the ground. And once I've got those five varieties identified, then I'm going to give away or sell or uh, cut into cuttings and, and uh, basically liquidate all these other fig plants. Or I might take them down and plant them at my son's property, but he don't like fig trees, so uh, we'll see. Anyway, that's the status on those. Here's a couple of guys I up-potted, and uh, those are two that I like. Uh, over here I've got my uh, squash. I've got some squash started and we're going to eventually take that squash and I'm going to plug it in right over there where my perpetual spinach and my onions are growing. That's last year's perpetual spinach and it truly lives up to its name. It's one of my favorite crops. And so I've got some pepper plants over here. I've got this little middle section with uh, perpetual spinach and onions and then I've got cucumbers over here let me show you my cucumbers. Samuel and I planted these and you can see we've already got true leaves forming on some of these so I'm gonna let those uh, really prove themselves and then uh, give it give another inch or two of growth and then I'm gonna trim out the weaker plant this was our hill that we had to replant it was damaged by uh, our dog and you can see that our replants our, our reseeding efforts have paid off and up come some cucumbers yeah, so before long, we're gonna to have to come in here and put net trellis between the posts and our cucumbers will form a big jungle right here. Over my bed number three, this is the awful bed filled with nut sedge. Now I've learned now through the comments, thank you to you guys for uh, teaching me about methods to try to get rid of this stuff. It is molasses, agricultural molasses, dried molasses. You can form a solution and soak this stuff with that molasses and it fosters from what i understand it fosters biological growth and it speeds up decay now i've heard of people putting this in their compost pile for that very reason but what we want is to we want that organic action down in the soil to eat and decompose the tubers and fibers and rhizomes and all the stuff that makes that nut grass so hard to get rid of so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come over and i'm going to put that uh, molasses there i'm going to cover this all with cardboard to smother any green growth and that's going to act as a as a mulch the worms will love it and i'm going to put my uh, mulch over the top of it for for, uh, for 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 looks and hopefully we can starve out at least some of this stuff in the meantime i've got my beans growing along the side here and uh, we've re-sowed some beans over here and it looks like it looks like we might have some that's not a bean we have not yet seen any sprouts from all the beans we have sowed just a lot of uh tomato volunteers coming up in here and a lot of crimson clover that's been left over from cro cover crops over the years all that stuff is uh, real easy to get rid of so hopefully we'll see some beans coming up in the next day or two let's go see if there's any coming up over here i don't see any well that's just going to be real disappointing if i don't get all these beans coming up there once again is what i'm talking about we're up against a battle where the nut grass up here you pull it up and you get all that you might think you've got all the roots but then you've got this nut right here and all these this network that goes out and forms new plants so that stuff's hard now, to get these are muscadine grapes i've got three different varieties over here this one is a fry this is a bronze female and uh yeah i put on some fruit last year but not much it shouldn't have these are the third year i can start expecting fruit in fact you can see some of the flowers coming in right there and each of those flowers uh, that's not fruit but each of those flowers represents a fruit so we're already going to have a nice little uh, crop this year what you've got to watch out for is right here this tendril will go up and grab anything that uh, it touches and wrap around it and those tendrils once they dry can ring your plant you can see right here there's one from last year these things are as hard as wire you, you literally they're, they're sort of hard to hard to deal with they're like little cables when they dry and you can see here when they go around the main growing uh, branch here man that's like wire those can really choke off and ring your plant here's another one i'm going to have to remove and so with muscadines you got to go through and tend your your vines like this and make sure you keep these from being ringed and cut off or they won't grow well and so each vine comes to the post and that's where they stop i can let them go no more and here's some more flowers coming in over here yeah so they're coming in well i'm really pleased with their progress 
here you can see our camel meals coming up and all we need is three or four of these in this pot so we'll have to thin that our basil's coming up coming up like crazy we'll have to thin this out too you can use this basil almost right away but we'll have to come in and, and pluck some of it out kind of sad to have to do that huh yeah well it won't grow if you leave it all in there uh, at least it won't grow healthy what we need is maybe two or three plants in here in the end and so let it grow up and put uh, put some nurture on this stuff that's good I love basil our dill dill's doing really well I'm gonna make pickles this year I'm gonna put the dill from my own garden in there I can smell it I mm, like that smell and this here is oregano I think it's oregano yeah green oregano I will be replacing those with some little wooden markers that I got because I don't like that over here we've got our cilantro and while it looks like I said before it looks kind of sad it's just a weed and it'll grow like crazy it'll flop around but it'll keep growing and right now it's it's doing really well it's almost doubled in size so uh, we like that cilantro I know we're, we've got our time remember the time that uh, we had to replace if you watch my uh, video on what to do when your garden throws you a curveball this stuff is uh, doing well at least the one that survived he's nice and per perky and uh, he's gonna make it got our rosemary my favorite herb we've got some sweet mint over here this stuff's pretty good smelling kind of makes you want to have an old-fashioned that's good stuff there's my in-ground fig tree in the backyard I've got one in the front yard too that's a Celeste this is a I believe it's an Ischia a green Ischia let me see I don't even remember I always thought it was an Olympian but then I always get it wrong and when I look at it yeah this is an Ischia fig this fig has never given me any fruit this fig tree is uh, not cooperative so I don't know this is its last year in the ground if it doesn't fruit it's coming up you usually get fruit on last year's growth and I'm not sure I see any figlets in there maybe, maybe that's what these are maybe we're gonna get some we'll see we'll give it a year it looks like we might get some fruit finally if I like this that'll be good stuff if not I might use this tree as rootstock since it's already got an established root system in there I could graft in some other figs here Meyer lemon tree gave a great crop this year it's got some green lemons still hanging down on there but uh, yeah every year this thing gives us a bumper crop and so needs to maybe be trimmed a little bit I know you're not some people say you're not supposed to prune or cut back a, a citrus tree but we do and it doesn't seem to impact it my other grapevine this was a surplus grapevine but it's one that I really wanted to to grow and so I'm going to let it kind of grow back here kind of wild up this tree of mine this grapevine is a southern home it's a kind of a hybrid between uh, a particular kind of muscadine grape and I believe a concord grape somehow they've managed to do that and it's supposed to be really good grape so we'll see I'm gonna let it fill up that tree and it will it'll go up there and uh, really kind of do its own thing so we'll see uh, down here in the bed where I put it I made a little little retaining wall back here in our wild place in our corner and uh, I sowed some borage and some other flowers back in here but I don't see them actually coming up yet maybe that's yeah that, there's a couple of things coming up I've got something there something there but I don't see anything else that's all right you know you try you, you see what happens and if it doesn't work yeah, put something else in I see some seeds coming up in the back over there there's a lot of wild activity back in this little corner. We got tons of spiders and lizards and snakes, and this is where the squirrels and birds always hang out. So it's nice back here. In fact, this spider web's always cool looking. This little green and orange guy. I wish you could see that guy. I can't get you. Get, there he is. There he goes. This is a little beautiful gem of a spider. Look at that. There you go. Yeah, things are greening up. Look at that. It's starting to look like my garden again. So that's our garden this year. We've got the bean bed, cucumbers, uh, miscellaneous stuff, peppers, and this is all tomatoes, and we've got our pots full of, of peppers and tomatoes. We're going to have some squash. We've got our figs, and then we'll have various miscellane uh, miscellaneous container plants of things that we decide to plant, things we try to grow. So kind of small this year. But, you know, we're a small backyard garden. We're not a farming operation. We're not trying to sustain ourselves here. We're trying to have fun gardening. That's our garden for today. You're not feeling well. That's why Sam's not been in our videos lately. He's not feeling well. But hey, you've got a good companion right there, don't you? Best in the world. 
This is Phoebe. Phoebe is our Pembroke Welsh Corgi. She is three years old. And she's yeah. kind of our official mascot. We love Phoebe. Good girl. Well, there you go. That's how our garden's looking in the middle of the month. And things are starting to green up and grow a bit. And we're going to have a, a nice bunch of food soon. Now, like I said, we don't really grow a whole lot of stuff here. We don't have a big diversity this year, but we do some things that maybe, um, you know, we like to eat, we like to enjoy, and every now and then we'll throw in something interesting. Thanks for joining us on Black Gumbo. Glad you stopped by. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We're so grateful for all the subscriptions and all your comments. I'm so grateful for inter interacting with you. You've given me some good advice, especially like that nut grass right there. Hopefully with your advice that you've given me, we can conquer that stuff. Y'all have a good evening. See you next time. Bye-bye.